All right, guys, we're going to be talking about Carnage 1.0. Not doing a breakdown, but I'm going to pull the upper and we're going to talk about it a little bit more than I have on my TikTok and on my Instagram. Um, just posted pictures. So, why this is coming out of the blue a little bit is BTK Stoli did mention me in a video. So, I'm going to reply back because that's what we do inside the community. So, as you guys can see, I'll give you the full overview real quick of Carnage 1.0. We're going to talk a little bit about the upper and lower um, and what is all done to this gun and how much time I really did spend building this. So I built this, oh geez, 2020, this gun was built. Um, this was my like first big leap, I guess, into building something um, by myself. This is right before I created the actual company that uh, now builds all this cool stuff for everybody. Um, we're going to talk about the upper, we'll talk about the lower after because the lower is a bit more in depth. So on the upper, we have a suppressor here that is loosened a little bit with an adapter. I don't know how I, yeah, you guys should be able to see that there with the adapter because we did retap the outer to 11. Um, Strike Industries, whoop, Strike Industries, hand stop here, Olight Odin, Carnage Customs upper, and then the long barrel here. 6.03 Promi. Our Prometheus with a Promi purple inside with the matching nub and then the M4P Max hop up. Uh, this originally had a Christmas hop up in it from Max. That broke because I go through hop ups pretty quick. And this one stuck around for a while. Starting to get a little bit of wear, but um, actually still shooting really well. Um, this gun sounds pretty crazy when it goes off. So it's definitely a lot of fun. Now let's talk about the fun part. Thing that makes everything work the lower i do use a fusion engine um i'm gonna link stoli's video below so you guys can kind of understand what i'm gonna be talking about just a little bit stoli was talking about using a jack um with a black leaf board and a gorilla fcu on the rear end inside of what i believe is like an smg style body because it's got the it doesn't have a tube it has the stock that goes against the side of the receiver he's thrown I have a gun like that, um, and I only have one or two of them because uh, SMGs are they're they're finicky at the end of the day. That SMG style body usually can be a little bit finicky those stocks. But we're gonna go through. We've got the Max Mag release right here, a speed straight red trigger here, Carnage Customs lower, Crytek Defiance grip, uh, Matrix buffer tube with engravings. And then a LCT something something 14 stock. They're like 20 bucks on e-bike. Probably my favorite stock because of what I'm about to show you. Unlatch that back end and you have a lot of battery room. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but this is not a small battery by any means. And it just fits right in there like butter. Um, then we have the Gorilla FCU right here. Now talking on Stoli's point, um, because he did specifically mention me when I, he started talking about his Gorilla. Um... I do love Gorilla FCUs. I love Gorilla as a whole in terms of a company. But using a black leaf board with a Gorilla FCU is going to usually cause issues in the experience that I found. Um, Gorilla likes working with stock Polar Star and a like and their own stuff. So Gorilla makes their own trigger boards for the Jack F1, F2, and Inferno. Um, no idea how the Polar Star would work with it. Wouldn't want to try it. I know it's a brand new engine. Um, that the Grill FC works great with, um, with their own trigger boards. Blackleaf is a different company, and I don't know why. It's almost the exact same board, but there must be something different because they do get a little bit finicky with them. Um, inside the Fusion Engine, I have a purple nozzle, as you guys can see on the front end, and a purple poppet in the back. Um, this gun is super air efficient because I have those parts in there, um, but I know some people who have shorter barrels than this, and even in some of my guns, I've had to use a red poppet instead of the purple one with a purple nozzle to get the FPS that I want with the air efficiency. Um, I do have a lightning banjo fitting that improves your F your uh, shots per tank very much. So I don't know how well it can be seen in there because I got that uh, I got some stuff taped up in here that actually did fall off. That is what I use to keep my mags in place. If you guys know anything about uh, custom guns and you know velcro is pretty much always a need in some cases um but otherwise that is carnage 1.0's build and it's it's a lot of tuning a lot of these guns come down to you can buy the parts you can buy an fe you can buy an f2 you can buy a jack you can buy anything right we all have the same access to the same parts but it's how you tune them and what parts you pair them with to uh make them work really well and 
you know, I have had a lot of success using certain parts. Um, and some people have had a lot of success doing the exact opposite of what I do. So there's many ways to build it. There's many ways to make things look cool and function great. Um, I, I do like that Stoli had mentioned me. He's used this uh, probably a couple times. I have some videos of him using my ProTec too um, and my M249. So there, there's a lot of cool builds that we've done that he's actually got to see and be a part of. This one actually is one of my only guns with a working selector, which is really fun. Um, it's still got its lever in it, and it's a uh, switch, and it's safety. Um, all my other guns don't have a safety, much like his. Um, but Stoli's build actually looks good. I have not actually seen that build in person yet, um, as we just got back from the May Shot Zone Tournament. OTMA taking first place. Really excited about that, not only as a company, but also as a team member. Um, and that, that's, uh, I believe he just got that back, so... I'll be seeing that probably this weekend, and uh, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about it um, probably in the next video where I tear down 2.0 or 3.0, but it looks good. Um, honestly, surprised it's not as ghetto as his other things. I know he's using a stock trigger, which, uh, what are you doing? I get I get it works for you, good for you, but I, I just I couldn't do that anymore. I really couldn't. I like being able to tune my trigger right to the reset or right where I want it. Um, in terms of an open play or a uh, after hours speed soft gun or a tournament gun. I really like to tune mine to exactly where I want it. And I wouldn't be able to do that with stock trigger from an APS build. But good for you for making it work. Alright guys, I will talk to you in the next one.